Binary ripple counters are good at making lights blink, but how do they sound? I've made sound generating projects before using a 555 oscillator and flip-flops as clock dividers which generates tones at musical intervals. A binary counter provides a convenient source of cascaded flip-flops. So I made this dual 4040 binary counter breakout board with today's sponsor, PCBWay. The 4040 takes a clock input and provides 12 consecutive outputs. And here's a representation of an 8-bit ripple counter. So if I use a 555 oscillator at a certain frequency and I feed that into the clock, the output of the first flip-flop is going to have that frequency divided by 2, and then this output is used to clock the next flip-flop. So the next flip-flop has a frequency divided by 2 again, and as you keep going through all the outputs, the frequency is divided by 2, and you get a slower and slower frequency pulse train if you tap into these outputs. And if this 555 input clock is generating an audio frequency tone, if we tap into each of these binary counter outputs, the frequency of the input tone is going to be one octave lower in pitch as we go through the counter. So on this PCB I'm taking two of the binary counters, and they're both sharing the same VCC and ground, but otherwise they have separate reset pins, separate clocks, and all 12 binary counter outputs available. So I can use these as two independent counters, or I can take one of these Q outputs from one and use it to clock the other and generate an even larger counter. But if I want to use this in a sound generating circuit, I'll feed the 555 into a clock and then just tap into whatever output I want to get different pitch tones. One reason it's convenient to have this on a PCB is I've ordered all of the Q outputs sequentially, whereas if I just put this chip on a breadboard, the outputs are all out of order and I have to have wires all over the place and it's harder to keep track. So using the 555 to generate a steady tone is one thing, but we can use the control voltage pin to modulate the output frequency. Because if we put a voltage on this control voltage input, we're changing the voltage on this comparator set point, and that impacts the timing of our output waveform. Because the 555 is going to charge and discharge the timing capacitor at a different rate, as we change this voltage. So we can modify the steady tone to go up or down in pitch with a control voltage signal. On the workbench I have a setup similar to this where I'm using a 555 to generate an audio frequency tone. I'm using it to clock this 12-bit binary counter, and then if I send the original 555 clock or one of these Q outputs to an audio amplifier, I can hear the steady tone. But I also have this 500k pot, and I have a 10 micro capacitor on the control voltage pin of the 555. So if I connect this to one of these Q outputs, Q9 is going to be changing high and low at a slower rate than whatever frequency is generating this tone here. So let's say I'm generating 1 kilohertz. At a certain point in time, when Q9 goes high, it'll start charging this capacitor, and that will start changing the control voltage, which is going to change the frequency of this output, and that's going to change the overall tone. So as long as this output is charging up this capacitor, we're going to hear basically a sliding tone pitch. And when this goes low, it's going to start discharging the capacitor, again changing the frequency, which changes the pitch over here. So we can get some interesting sounds by tapping into this binary counter and manipulating the oscillator that's clocking this counter. All kinds of weird sounds can be made. So this can be fun to experiment with and can be even put to use with more complicated sound generators.